Welcome to Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette with your host, Steve Garrett, lifetime member of the National Corvette Museum, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 45 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette and the only current podcast dedicated to Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call them at 833-840-5334. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say, hey, Google, or Alexa, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. And be sure to visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetoday.com. You can access everything there, including the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also join our Corvette Today Facebook group there as well. Also, make sure you sign up for the Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And if you like YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our Corvette Today YouTube channel. See all Corvette Today episodes on YouTube as well. And be sure to patronize our flagship sponsors of Corvette Today, MidEngineCorvetteForum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at MidEngineCorvetteForum.com. Soul Performance Products, developed and manufactured in the United States, the Soul Performance Products exhaust portfolio has been tailored to elevate the experience of the world's most exciting sports cars, including the latest generation of the Corvette. Soul Performance Products at soulpp.com, the official performance exhaust of Corvette today. C8 Rally Driver is the one-stop shop for your C8 Corvette. Choose from custom-designed trunk and front covers, Z06 engine builder CNC plaques, customized wind restrictors, fluid caps, strut covers, rear hatch supports, and more. Everything is uniquely designed to provide you with custom accessories for your C8 Corvette. Visit their website at c8rallydriver.com and let your imagination run wild. That's c8rallydriver.com. Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an amazing value, starting at only $23.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And use the promo code CT111 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com, that's A-E-R-O-L-A-R-R-I.com, and use the promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. Sioka Corvettes. If you're a Corvette enthusiast, and I know you are since you're listening and watching Corvette today, then you need to know about Sioka Corvette. They're based in Atlantic City, where you can find over 100 new and pre-owned vets on the lot and inbound. Sioka also ships Corvettes all over the country, custom ordered to your specifications. They're staffed with experienced pros who can answer all your questions. So don't compromise. Visit SiokaCorvette.com. That's C-I-O-C-C-A Corvette.com and find out more. Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. And a shout out to Canadian Corvette Forum and Corvette Forum, welcoming Corvette enthusiasts from around the world. On this episode of Corvette Today, we celebrate 50 years of the NCRS, the National Corvette Restorer Society. And here to talk about that more is Region 7 Director and a personal friend of mine, Tony Stein. Tony, welcome to Corvette Today, buddy. Steve, thank you for inviting me to join you on your podcast. I've been a big time fan for a long time, and I really appreciate the opportunity to visit with you today. Thank you, buddy. And I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show. First of all, let's get to know you a little bit better, Tony. How long have you been into Corvettes? Steve, I'm in my 60s, and speaking of the 60s, back in the 1960s, I was just a little kid, and I remember one of the neighbors up the street had worked at a grocery store and had purchased, I'll never forget it, a 1965 Corvette. He would drive it up and down the streets, and I would come out and look at it all the time, and it just hooked me right there. And from that moment on, I was definitely a Corvette guy. Yeah. Now, did you come from a car family? My 
dad liked vintage cars. He liked sports cars. The good news was he always liked really cool sports cars. The bad news was he was not mechanically inclined at all. And it seemed like whatever he bought in terms of a sports car was always in the restoration or repair shop. So my mom was more like, you know, it's time to get a practical family car. But yeah, I did grow up around sports cars. And so that did have some influence on me. That's really good. Now, were there other cars that maybe caught your attention as a young boy besides Corvettes? You know, anyone that's a baby boomer that's in their 60s can remember back in the days when we were young and we would see a car driving down the street and you'd be with a buddy and you'd say, oh, that's a 69 because of this feature. Or that's a 67 or whatever. So we all grew up with these muscle cars and sports cars. And so definitely I would see some of those iconic cars from the 60s and 50s and early 70s that would catch our eyes. And we would always be enamored by these really cool cars. Those cars back then just seemed to have a better, more unique styling to the ones that we see on the roads today that were designed more by engineers for fuel economy standards. But yeah, there was a lot more interest in the styling back then. Yeah, the 60s were a great time for cars, especially 1969. Right. Now tell me what your oh wow moment was when it comes to Corvettes, Tony. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I think it was my neighbor's car. Really? You know, the Corvette, no question, it's America's sports car. Back in the day, it was the most unique looking car in the world on the streets where I grew up in Kansas City. And I think seeing that car go up and down the street and looking at it, it just made such a vivid impression on me. At age eight or nine, I couldn't imagine what it would take to be able to own a car like that. But it certainly set a goal for me that one day I would. And I think that probably was the oh wow moment in my life with Corvettes. It just stamped me right there. I just loved the cars. Absolutely. You know, I think that when I I saw the 63 split window Corvette. That was my oh wow moment. It's like, wow, that thing looks nothing like anything else on the road. I want to own one of those when I can drive and get a driver's license. Yeah, Steve, you and I have the same DNA when it comes to cars. You know, whenever you would talk to someone about the old Stingrays, the first thing they ask is, oh, you mean the old split windows? <laughs> Everybody knows what a split window is, and that's really where I'm coming from, too. So is the C2 your favorite generation of Corvette, then? Yeah, it is, Steve. You know, Chevrolet's been making Corvettes since 1953, and they've been broken down by generations. The first generation is known as the C1s, and that's from 1953 through 1960. Then there were some dynamic changes made with the Corvette starting in 1963, performance improvements, styling differences, and so forth. And there's just something about the C2s that were made from 1963 to 1967 that really is what does it for me. I love the old C2s, the original Stingrays. I think they are the most iconic of all the Stingrays. I agree with you, buddy. Well, Tony, let's take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about you and the NC. CRS. That's coming up next on Corvette Today. We all know that wheels make the car. Wheelcraft's PVD chrome finish in bright chrome or black chrome will take your Corvette to new levels. And it comes with a five-year warranty. Durability is a defining feature of the Wheelcraft finish. Their PVD chrome is superior to traditional chrome with a finish that is brake dust resistant and cleans effortlessly with soap and water. Wheelcraft offers factory wheel exchange for select C4 through C8 models, or they can apply the PVD finish to your current wheels. No no matter what generation you own, Wheelcraft will transform the look of your Corvette. With every Corvette comes a unique story, and Wheelcraft has embraced this idea. When you purchase your new set of wheels, you receive a lifetime membership to the Wheelcraft pit crew, granting you access to your own page on Wheelcraft's website, where you can post pictures and tell your Corvette story. Visit our website at wheelcraft.com or call 833-639-4231. Arrive in style with Wheelcraft. The Radiator Grill Store offers protection for your C8's front radiators and side intakes. They also carry front strut tower covers to prevent rusting and pooling water, all with do-it-yourself installation. Get 10% off your total purchase with promo code CT10. See the full line of products at radiatorgrillstore.com. When you want to buy a Corvette, or any Chevrolet for that matter, get yours from Hendrick Chevrolet Shawnee Mission located in Kansas City. Hendrick Chevrolet is the largest Corvette dealership and showroom in the Midwest. With a knowledgeable sales staff and Corvette sales specialists on hand, they'll help you build the Corvette of your dreams, and they ship nationwide. With Corvette certified master mechanics on site and a huge parts department, with over 24,000 parts and $2 million in inventory, Hendrick Chevrolet is well equipped to take care of your every need. 
From sales to service to collision repair, Hendrick Chevrolet has you covered. Visit ChevyUSA.com or call 913-384-1550. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Thanks for checking out Corvette Today on podcast and YouTube. It's the only current podcast dedicated to Corvette. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. You want your Corvette looking its best? We'll dress it up with bright chrome or black chrome wheels. Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or do a wheel exchange, and you get a five-year warranty. So visit wheelcraft.com today or give them a call, 833 833- Six three nine four two three one. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is Tony Stein, one of the directors of the NCRS, the National Corvette Restorer Society. We are celebrating 50 years of the NCRS. In this second segment, we're going to talk to Tony more about how he got into the NCRS. Tony, tell me the story about how you found the NCRS and when did you join? Well, in my early 20s, I decided it was time and I finally had a little bit of extra money and I decided I want to go and buy a Corvette. And so I searched, I went through the classified ads of a local Kansas City newspaper and I found a 1966 Corvette that really looked interesting to me. And I went and looked at it, talked to the owner, decided to buy it. And finally, I was in the Corvette Ownership Club, but I didn't want to enjoy the hobby on my own. And so I started going to different car shows and there was a particular Corvette only car show that was at one of the local shopping malls. And I went there and I looked at some of the other Corvettes that were on display and I started talking to some of the owners there. And they had mentioned to me that there was this group that was originated out of Cincinnati, Ohio, called the NCRS, the National Corvette Restorer Society. And they explained to me that the NCRS was really devoted to the originality of these cars. In other words, the NCRS was devoted to the preservation and restoration of older Corvettes. And at the time, they were really just accepting C1 Corvettes and they were thinking about adding C2. So you know that this was a a long time ago. I think, Steve, this was around 1980 or so. Okay. So I started investigating this NCRS group that I kept hearing about. And it isn't like today where you pick up your cell phone and you do a Google search of NCRS and you have your answer within about 10 seconds. It took some time to be able to find the contact information and so forth. Eventually, I was able to get an application. I sent my application in, and I officially became a member of the NCRS on May 1st, 1981. Wow. So my 43rd year of membership is coming up later this spring. Congratulations, buddy. That's outstanding. Now, for those that are listening or watching Corvette today that may not be familiar with the NCRS, tell us a little bit about the NCRS and what its purpose is. Well, Steve, the NCRS technically is a 501c7 club organization. It's a hobby club. It's a not-for-profit organization. It's organized nationally. We have nearly 12,000 members throughout the United States, wow. Canada, Europe, Australia. It isn't just an American society. It's the love of the Corvette throughout the world. And the society is really devoted to the purposes of providing a venue to educate owners on what their cars looked like when they left the factory, delivered to the selling dealer, the dealer prepared it for delivery to the owner. And so the NCRS is all about that objective. The really neat thing about the NCRS is that we're organized not just as members, but we also have local chapters throughout the United States. For instance, I'm out of metropolitan Kansas City. We have a Kansas City NCRS chapter where we have over 90 members. We get together on a monthly basis. We have car judging events, and there are chapters throughout the United States. So it's not as though you join this national organization and you're left by yourself to figure it out on your own. We have chapters that organize judging events. We also have regional judging events, and we have a national judging event that is usually hosted every summer. 
We call it the NCRS Corvette Nationals, and the best judges, the most knowledgeable judges in the Corvette hobby will be there to help evaluate members' cars. And it's a very extensive process to get a car judged, but it's definitely worth it because we have found owners that have their cars judged, oftentimes the value of their cars increase because they're able to achieve some of our awards. The NCRS has an extensive publication process where the best people in the hobby are involved with helping to write technical information and judging guides for different years. For instance, we have judging guides from 1953 through 2007. Wow. It goes through the various attributes of a car from operations, interior, exterior, the mechanical section, and the chassis section. Many of these judging guides can be over 300 pages long. They're very extensive. The NCRS is the one and only organization that publishes these types of judging guides. We also are the organization that trains not only the judges for the NCRS, but many of the judges that also judge at other Corvette organizations were trained by the NCRS. So it really begins with the NCRS in terms of understanding these classic automobiles, understanding what they looked like when they left the factory. Now, there's different reasons why people get into the Corvette hobby. It isn't just what the NCRS is all about, and that's fine. I mean, if someone wants to buy a Corvette and they want to make modifications, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, we have a section of the NCRS called Concourse Judging, where we welcome cars for judging that have specifically had modifications, had body changes, have new types of engines put in, areas that are chrome that were never chrome from the factory. We do have judging to encourage cars that have been modified and sometimes heavily modified. And we do offer judging for that. But our bread and potatoes is really what the cars looked like when they left the factory, delivered to the dealer, the dealer prepped it for the owner. What did it look like when the dealer handed the keys to the very first owner and the owner left the parking lot that day? Yeah. That's really what we're all about. And you will not find a more helpful bunch out there to help an owner understand what that car looked like when it was brand new. That's awesome. Talk about some of the awards that people can win from the NCRS and how they are achieved? That's a great question, Steve. It begins with what's called our flight program. We will evaluate a car for judging with 10 judges. Think about that. Wow. There are five sections that we evaluate when a car is being judged for flight awards, operations, interior, exterior, mechanical, and chassis. Two judges per section. And it takes about 45 minutes for each group of judges to evaluate each of those five sections. It's very comprehensive. And the goal here is to achieve a score or an evaluation that comes close to what the car looked like when the car left the factory, as I've described a little while ago. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. For instance, based on our matrix judging system that we originally developed for judging, and I can talk about that later, we have in mind what a car should have looked like when it left the factory in order to achieve what we call a top flight award. You have to score within 94% of what the car would have looked like theoretically when it left the factory. So in order to achieve a blue ribbon top flight, you have to score 94% or better in order to achieve a top flight award. There are a couple other flight awards. There's a second flight award, which doesn't quite make the 94% criteria. And below that, we have a third flight. Those are just different evaluation standards on how close a car looks compared to how the car we believe looked when it left the factory. So that's how we're evaluating it based on appearance and condition. The two criteria that we will look at when a car is judged for flight judging is number one, originality, and number two, condition. And when we evaluate originality, we set it up on objective standards where we're looking at configuration, the date of a particular subassembly or part, if it's complete, if it's installed correctly, and if it's got the correct finish. So we call that CDCIF as part of our objective standard for evaluating the originality of a car. And then the second area would be the condition itself. We encourage people to drive their cars. And I've been to some car shows, oftentimes other Corvette shows, and they tend to be more of a show and shine type evaluation. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of amused that sometimes a judge at a show and shine will give 
give a deduction because there's a little bit of dust on a brake caliper. We don't care if there's a little bit of dust on a brake caliper. We want you to drive your car. In fact, we have an award system that if you drive your car from home to a judging event, we will give you points for driving. Wow. So it's not as though we just want to have trailer queens, meaning the only driving that a car does is from the owner's garage to his trailer to the judging event. We really encourage people to drive their cars. Honestly, the more you drive your car, the better it tends to operate. The NCRS is all about people not just restoring and preserving their cars to make them look as though they did when they left the factory. We want us to continue to enjoy our cars, too. Yeah. What attracted you to the NCRS, Tony? Maybe it's because I'm a bit of a history nut, but I really like the idea of what the cars look like when they were made back in the day. There's definitely a nostalgia with that. And I think it's really just going back to that earlier time that we remember in our lives. And I think that's really why a lot of people collect anything, whether it's cars or coins or whatever. It just reminds them of a time in history that they really relate to. And they don't want to let go of those times. And yeah. I think that's probably the reason why I've really been attracted to the NCRS. And I would also say this. And I mentioned earlier, we have about 12,000 members. And what we like to say is we come to these events for the cars, but we stay for our friends. And I've made some of the best friends that I've ever made in my life in this hobby. And I don't know that I'll live longer because of this hobby, but I know I'll live happier. Absolutely right. That's really what keeps me in this is all of the great friendships. It doesn't matter what they do for a living during the daytime. We've got successful people from all walks of life. But when we get together, we put our suits and ties off to the side or our lunch pails or whatever. And all of a sudden, we're just Corvette buddies and we love the camaraderie and the fellowship. And that's really, to me, what it's all about. And that's what the NCRS brings is the camaraderie with these great friends. Yeah. You're absolutely right, buddy. And now, 40 plus years into this, you're the Region 7 director, aren't you? I am, and I'm really honored to have been elected to the Region 7 directorship. And let me just kind of explain what that means. The NCRS has a national board of directors. There are nine board seats that are all elected. They're all set up by geography. So, for instance, Region 7, over which I represent, includes the states of Missouri, Kansas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana, those six states. And there's about a 1,000 NCRS members in Region 7. My term is for three years. I have some ideas on helping to move the NCRS forward. As you mentioned at the beginning, the NCRS is celebrating this year its 50th anniversary, but that doesn't mean that we have to think as though it's still the 1970s, and we've got some dynamic plans to cause the NCRS to continue to thrive in the future as we move forward, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to participate in the National Board of Directors. Yeah, that's really cool. And you have a specialty. What is your generation specialty? C2s in general, but I'm on the national judging teams for 1965 and 1966. I've co-authored sections of the judging guides for 1965 and 1966. I'm the guy that gets underneath the car and looks at the <laughs> chassis and so forth. I'm the one that gets to sleep on the job underneath the car. Nice. I like that. That's awesome. Well, buddy, let's take our final break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the 50th anniversary of the NCRS and what's going on to celebrate. It. That's coming up next on Corvette Today. Are you ready for a better insurance policy without the Corvette tax? With agreed value protection, the value of your collector vehicle will never change. Plus, you'll save money. Get a quick quote at ncminsurance.com. Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up there. At True Wealth & Company, we take that to heart. See, at True Wealth & Company, we believe your retirement lifestyle travels through two doors. Door number one, the blue door, gives you more options, financial freedom. Your money outlives you. Every happiness you wish for in life is through the blue door. Door number two, the red door, is where you outlive your money. You rely on family, friends, or even the state to take care of you. At True Wealth & Company, we're not just financial planners. The best way to walk through the blue door is to have a written plan. Make a work-optional lifestyle a reality with our proprietary True Life Map formula. Look towards your future with anticipation, not apprehension. 
Having a rock-solid fiduciary partner like True Wealth & Company is essential to effective financial planning. There's no winging it. There's nothing left to chance. Look, we don't want you to become another Yogi Berraism. Give us a call today at 913-653-TRUE. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Start your financial independence and work optional lifestyle today. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth & Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25. And every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. You're enjoying the only current podcast on Corvettes, Corvette Today. Hey, thanks once again for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. You want your Corvette looking its best, don't you? Well, dress it up with bright chrome or black chrome wheels. Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or do a wheel exchange, and you get a five-year warranty. So visit wheelcraft.com today or give them a call, 833-639-4231. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is Tony Stein from the NCRS, and we're talking about the 50th anniversary of the organization. Tony, tell me what generations of Corvette the NCRS goes up to now, because I'm a member of the Kansas City Local Chapter 2. I didn't even realize we go up as far as we do. Well, Steve, we do, and we try to move along as new model years come out. Actually, we're up to the year 2007 now, so we will judge cars from 1953 through 2007, which is the sixth generation, C6. Yeah, that's really cool. Talk about more what that means in terms of the value of your car when you have it judged by the NCRS. That's a great question, Steve. And I think it's really important to understand the value that NCRS awards bring. A lot of times people will look at these cars, they fall in love with the look of the cars. The nostalgia reminds them of a time that they would like to buy a car from those times. As I talked about earlier when I was a kid and I saw the neighbor up the street that had a 1965 Corvette. Just because the cars look good doesn't mean that they are mechanically fit or that they are everything that they appear to be visually. I mean, we see these cars go through the auctions and so forth. Why does one car that's a particular year go for a lot more money than another car that's of the same year? I mean, what's the difference between those cars? They may both be a 1967 Corvette or a 1965 Corvette, and you'll see one 65 go across and a camera for a lot more money than the next 65 that goes through. Why is that? Well, it's because you get into situations where there's a lot more to these cars than a fancy, shiny paint job. We don't know about the mechanics of the car, the fit, the finish, the originality, all of those things. And so what the NCRS does when they provide their flight awards and other awards is that it's really kind of like the good housekeeping seal of approval with these cars. You've got the best, brightest, most knowledgeable judges in the entire world will look at a car, say at a national event, and if they say this car is a top flight car, you can rest assured that it has passed the strictest of scrutiny when it comes to evaluating these cars. So when an individual takes the time to buy the car, have the car restored, and that's a lot of expense too, and then they pay for the transportation to take it to a regional or one of our national events, and they achieve one of these top awards, a top flight award, or even more difficult to obtain a Duntoff Award, which is a whole different level of an award, you know that that car has been scrutinized by the very best judges in the world and given the top awards. That's awesome. And that's the reason why our awards often and usually do add value to the cars, because the more risk that a buyer feels like he's going to encounter in buying a car, the less he's going to want to pay for the car. Yeah. And conversely, the 
less risk that you feel like you're facing with buying a car that's got the blue top flight award, the more confidence that the buyer is going to have that the car is original and correct and operates correctly. And that's why you begin to see these higher and higher prices at auctions and through private sales for cars that have our top awards. Yeah, That's the value component of what the NCRS brings. That's awesome. Tony, talk about what's planned for the big 50th anniversary of the NCRS. We have an event that's scheduled in early August of this year in Virginia Beach, Virginia, right near the coast. We visited there before. It's a wonderful facility. It will be held in the Hampton Roads Convention Center. It's going to be a wonderful event. We'll have some great cars, great special events there. We'll be honoring our 50th anniversary at that time. It's really going to be exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. That's fantastic. What is the date of that show? It's the first week of August 2024, and people can check it out on our website, which is ncrs.org. We always invite new members to join us. It's only $60 a year. You get some award-winning publications once every couple months, and you really get to plug into the core of what this hobby is all about. And all of the information on our 50th anniversary celebration will be on our website. That sounds great. You know, I'm honored to be in the NCRS, even though I've owned C7s and C8s. I still love the history and the nostalgia that comes with Corvette, and that's why I'm in the NCRS myself. Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to be on Corvette today. Congratulations on being the regional director in section number seven. I look forward to seeing you at the 50th anniversary celebration. Thanks, Steve, for all you do for the hobby. Thanks again for listening and watching Corvette Today. And be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today show. And thanks to our sponsors, Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com to learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call 833-639-4231. Soul Performance Products at SOULPP.com, the official performance exhaust of Corvette today. Sioka Corvette at CIOCCA Corvette.com. True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels, get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. C8 Rally Driver at C8 Rally Driver.com. And Hendrick Chevrolet in Kansas City at ChevyUSA.com. Thanks for checking out Corvette Today on podcast and YouTube. If you'd like to contact Steve with ideas for Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Also, sign up for email notifications at corvettetoday.ck.page. Follow Steve and the show on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and threads at Steve Garrett DJ. Thanks again for listening and watching Corvette Today.